So is it bad that I'm not quite living for this show just yet? I mean, maybe it's a grower and not a shower. I'm trying really hard to watch it and not hold it to my Issa Rae insecure standards, but it's so hard. I mean, but it's cute though. Welcome back to my channel. It's Tyra here with another struggle review here to discuss rap shit. Now this is a brand new show available on HBO Max and it's loosely based on the City Girls. <laughs> now before I get into all things female empowerment rap, I need you guys to drop down and subscribe to my channel and like this video. I'm going to give you guys a moment to do that and then we're going to come back and discuss I mean, it's it's just episode one and two. That's what that's what I kept telling myself. It's just episodes one and two. We have multiple opportunities to hopefully fall in love with these characters. Go back, 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 back. hopefully subscribe to see more of me let's get into this episode but before we jump into the show let's get into a little background about our two female leads here and a little bit more information besides it coming from our girl Issa Rae the show centers around two Miami-based females trying to make rap careers. Now we have Shauna here portrayed by Adia Osmond. I was not at all familiar with her, but I see that she's a writer and she's a comedian. She's wrote for shows like Big Mouth and Betty, but for the most part, this is her first acting role. And then we have Mia who is portrayed here by Chameleon, who is actually a Miami-based female rapper. Now I. I am familiar with a few of her songs, but not her career really in depth. I am mostly familiar with her through the show Love and Hip Hop. So I was really excited to see her here and get this opportunity. Of course, this is her first real acting role, but of course, you know, Love and Hip Hop is acting child. And lastly, of course, this show was created by Issa Rae. This is pretty much her baby. Not only is she an executive producer from the look she directed an episode, and she's also in head writer for the show. We also have the City Girls in quality control with producer credits on the show. So I'm assuming that they were consulted and that this is loosely based on their careers. Now for this first episode, Something for the City, we are really diving into the current state of females in hip hop, females in rap, social media, TikTok, all that good stuff is very, very present, especially for our lead character here, Shauna, who works at a Miami hotel, but she aspires to be a female rapper, but not just any shake it fast ass female rapper. No, she wants to be socially conscious. You no, know, Shauna doesn't wanna, now from the top, make it drop, that's some wet. What, what, she's not trying to walk up in here. She's trying to, you know, just another day living in the hood, just another day around the way, feeling good today. Like she, she's absolutely not trying to sell her body, yaddy, yaddy. She even had an opportunity with a former friend back in college to really launch her career, but he wanted to switch up the image. Everybody knows at this point that sex sells, especially when it comes to female rap. Now, right away, what I did like about the show was just the current conversation of hip-hop everybody claims that they want you know variety what is this can we get some substance everybody it's all about bbls and ass shots and twerking but when you have somebody try to come into the forefront you know being conscious being covered really having a message within their music ain't nobody buying that shit <laughs> these artists are going unsupported and we see that very much with shauna who wants respect so bad that she's willing to hide her face behind this African-esque aesthetic and this Afro wig just so people can focus and listen. And yet again, 
nobody cares. Now, what was also a bit distracting for me and kind of taking me out of the show, which I know uh, it's really trying to be progressive with us getting into the era that we're in. It's all about your phone. Everybody's on their freaking phone. I'm on my phone now. But when it comes to social media, it's on a whole different level. So we get a lot of POV from the scenario of the phone and it kind of comes off as shaky cam and sometimes the screen is, you know, gloss over, giving filter. Issa Rae is really trying to put us into the now and where we are. But I just, I don't know. I was not vibing with it right away, but I'm hoping that maybe getting more into the show, it'll grow on me. Now, what that presence of social media does help us with is showing us, you know, how Shauna is a little bit envious and low key, a little bit of a hater. <laughs> we meet all of these different people with this really shallow social media, typical presence who she feels like has sold out to get on girl you're not light skin you white what are you doing <laughs> you got these butt injections oh you're doing this like it's all about you know the perception but it's not to say you know what let them do them i'm gonna do what i need to do to get on no shauna is low-key a freaking hater even when it comes to chastity you know sitting trying to get on chastity is clearly trying to get on as somebody's promoter and she is really trying to sell herself and she just sees it as fake it just seems like this episode she was taking any and every opportunity to talk some shit about somebody who wasn't up to her definitive level in actuality, she is completely down talking and hating because she wants to be there. She wants that presence. She wants to see those numbers and see all that activity for her on social media and not work her current temporary job. Unlike Mia, who is very, very active on social media, she gets, you know, that public response. She gets to see those numbers. She is working. She is, I think, a makeup artist. And she is also a single mom. I was like, oh, this Carisha? <laughs> But right away, you see that both women are pretty much at different crossroads in their life. They both look to be maybe in their early 20s. And it looks like they both need help in different ways, especially Mia as a single mom. She even goes to her for help, you know, with babysitting her daughter in this episode. But right away, you get the sense that, you know, these aren't some besties. Like, it's like, bitch, you were my last resort. So it's interesting to see where their relationship leads to later, especially with them having totally different outlooks looks when it comes to you know life perspective <laughs> what they see as value even their personalities their looks it seems like they are on completely opposite ends of the spectrum and I can say for the most part at least that's interesting even uh, when we get into Shauna and her mainly kind of looking at Mia as that personality and those numbers that she wishes she has it doesn't look like it's really coming from a strong friendship type of perspective Shauna is literally so miserable. <laughs> she is so aggy at the outlook of where her career is and her status in comparison to everybody else. She can't even maintain a decent conversation or even a little phone sex with her current long distance, co long distance college boyfriend. It's just, she's just so upset. And it's just like, girl, that ain't got nothing to do with us. <laughs> But according to her, and especially social media, everybody's life is pretty much moving while she's stuck, trying to have a career, riding the bus, and working at a hotel. Now, about 20 minutes into the episode, something was just not resonating with me as far as the show was concerned. I was trying too hard, in my opinion, to get into it. And then I was just thinking, I am a bit older. I am in my 30s. Maybe, you know, this is coming just from a perspective that I'm just not identifying with I'm not really all that big on social media or TikTok or any of that so maybe I'm just not bobbing for that reason but something with the show comes off a bit fake it's like it's trying too hard to be uh trendy and it's just not coming off authentic it's almost like pandering I don't know if it was just me but something was just like yeah like all right y'all trying too hard but we get it now, what was also very present was that contradiction of don't believe everything that you see and hear on social media. Both ladies are, you know, being one way in their social media presence, but another way behind closed doors. Shauna is very righteous and she's very opinionated, very conscious, very strong in her female empowerment rap perspective and all righteous, but we, we doing crazy. 
credit card fraud girl. She taking pictures of people's credit cards. <laughs> I was like, oh, so you JT, okay. <laughs> we all know how that ended. Boo Boo Kitty had to do some time. <laughs> Which is uh, another aspect of the show also because we kind of already know what's happening here. So I'm like, how loosely is it based? How far are we gonna take this? But it does look like Sis was scamming in the episode or she's prepping to scam. And we also have Mia who is very strong-willed and giving out advice and I don't need a makeup or nothing. I'm in the other spot. And we are OnlyFans. <laughs> or what looks to be kind of an OnlyFans situation. You know, twerking, shaking, pouncing, but back, banking that ass up on OnlyFans and we're seeing her pretty much do some things that she does not want to do. She is an ex stripper but you can see that she really wants more for her life and what she is currently doing you know clearly the multiple jobs the OnlyFans is from a lack of support and help from her baby daddy RJ Silent. I was really happy to see him. I have been really happy to see this young man since The Harder They Fall and even a new current movie I just recently watched watched on Amazon Prime Emergency. He has so much screen presence and he was instantly hilarious. Lamont here, just that baby daddy trying to have that up and coming rap career, you know, always and forever in the studio. And she was just sick of it. But I was like, oh, somebody can act. <laughs> I swear I was like, oh, somebody who's not forcing it. He could just genuinely act that's coming off natural that he ain't shit. And I'm loving the little two seconds that we got with him in this episode. But sis needs some help and she is just not getting it. Now, after we have the girls agree to go out to the club, even a really reluctant Mia, and we can see when they have their conversation in the car why she was so reluctant to join her. And it's just like, girl, I'm having a good time out with you or whatever. But you clearly see that Shauna might be that girl. You know, she kind of thought she was too good. Like, oh, we're going we're gonna to eat here. We're going to go in this neighborhood. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, girl, you just kind of low key disappeared. All I know is, you know, we got older. I had my baby. We went to high school. And then later on, you were nowhere to be found. You just kind of walked away. And Shauna just pretty much says, you know, she did feel like she was going somewhere, progressing into college and that whole thing and kind of feels like she dropped the ball within her life because she trusted someone and leveraged everything on a rap career that didn't pan out because she wasn't willing to compromise who she feels like she wants to be as a female rap artist for a freaking career but we end off the episode pretty much with the girls coming to can't wait with it can't wait with it can't wait with it can't wait with it I still I so clean I just still I so clean. Y'all can't miss with Kang Wang. Soon as they threw on that Kaya Kang Wang, I was like, oh, y'all wanna go here? <laughs> but it's a good time. But you trying to see them kind of collectively come together. We do have Shauna here who is pretty much drunk. So in a sense, she is kind of dumbing down her rap. Like, I don't care. We're just flowing. They are going in and out on, you know, social media, having a good time, going live for everything. This show is very much into the current status of fucking social media. They're continuing to go live and talking shit and it eventually turns into a rap and you kind of see Mia she's not really into music at all but she is kind of there as the hype man and she is the one with the following the one with the swag and you kind of see them come together in a really uh awaken Shauna go like you know what hey this could maybe be something we should maybe start a rap group she finally wakes up with a big smile on her face y'all she was cheesing at all those likes and retweets reposts whatever the hell but she didn't text her boyfriend back though not at that moment she was distracted well you guys that was part one of my review for rap shit be sure to scroll up like you know just one scroll because y'all be acting like it's just so hard to hear me discuss episode two of rap shit thank you guys so much for watching this video i see you in like two seconds you, you gonna scroll up right right yeah do that